In this age of new normal, online is not your only option. Because new normal means new learning modalities and new learning possibilities. Let Dibal make learning offline possible with Smart Class. Smart Class contains pre-made daily modules sequenced according to DepEd's budgeted teaching and learning calendar. Each module has a specific lesson duration and has day markers to guide parents and teachers in the asynchronous learning of learners. Inside the modules available in Smart Class, you will find the following elements. First, learning competencies are identified in the module openers. Kickstarters are available to test students' prior knowledge on the subject matter. This set of activities, found at the beginning of each lesson, may also serve as motivational activities. Parents of preschool to grade 2 students will also find notes to parents which contain tips and pointers on how they can guide their child while learning at home. Redefine your student's learning experience with the integration of augmented reality technology into images and illustrations available in Smart Class, making learning more interactive and exciting. At the end of each module, Long Quiz is also available to assess students' understanding of the lesson. Smart Class also features Wrap Up, a lesson ender activity that applies the constructivism theory of learning. In wrap-up, students are expected to summarize the lesson on their own using a graphic organizer. You may also evaluate the quality of your students' learning by letting them practice their learning in real life through GRASP's formatted performance tasks. The content of Smart Class is designed for the entire academic year, and it is available for five major subjects. All aligned with DepEd's K-12 curriculum and covers the most essential learning competencies prescribed by DepEd. Secure your own copy of Smart Class before classes open. Contact marketing at debaugroup.com to know more. Good afternoon, Kabibal, and welcome to our Senior High School Webinar Series. For today's discussion, our topic would be on Senior High School in the New Normal, Trends in Conducting Classes and Administrative Operations. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Place your questions on the comment box allotted during the session and they will be addressed by our speaker later on. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this afternoon, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. Our speaker is a theology faculty, a researcher, and a school administrator in the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, Philippines. She serves as the principal of the university's senior high school. She also teaches as the Institute of Preaching of Dominican Province of the Philippines. She has given numerous seminars, trainings, and workshops on leadership, spirituality, values education, theology and religious education, teaching strategies, coaching, and evaluation nationwide. Her research interest includes religious education curriculum and instruction, Pauline in scriptures, catechesis, social ethics, and development. She writes textbooks, journals on Christian living, ortho orthodoxy, and ortho orthopraxy. She took up her doctorate in theology with concentration on the biblical Paul, applying Paul's ideals, philosophy, teaching, and spirituality to missionary catechists today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Mary Erica Bolaños, LPT.
Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, po, Doc. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is a little new for for most of us. Um, while I am accustomed to speaking in in public, particularly, of course, uh, even in in international even in international seminars, I realized this is really a challenge um, talking through the media of or medium of computer. Now I heard, I'm, I'm, I, I hope I'm audible enough. So good afternoon, I'm Erica. I'm affiliated at the University of Santa Tomas, um, senior high school, as mentioned a while ago. At the same time, I, I am proud to say that I am one with you in uh, in having this challenge and in coping with the difficulties and yet and yet surviving victoriously in this pandemic. Now, let me just say, share my screen. Okay. Just give me a few minutes. Oh, seconds rather. Okay. I think my screen is shared right now. I think... Yes, po, Doc. Yes, okay, po. thank you so much. Okay, so I would like to focus on the senior high school in the new normal, um, particularly the trends in conducting classes and administrative operations. But before we begin with a more serious topic, allow me to share with you a story. I always love sharing stories. Uh, I don't want to bore you, so... Allow me to be a storyteller. Um, I have this four-year-old nephew of my friend. So my friend's four-year-old nephew, as the picture is seen right there, you can see that. He lives in Canada. Uh, um, his name is Caden. He lives in Canada, but he, because of course, just like in the Philippines, the school there was put, to hold it was in halt so they had to do online schooling so my friend enrolled Caden in an online school in the Philippines imagine Caden is in Canada his school is here in the Philippines so the pandemic opened the gates to intercultural cross-culture learning beyond borders in Canada Caden got accustomed to different nationalities, um, Canadians, Indians, French, yeah. but not much Filipinos, I presume. Yeah. Um, but because he's uh, enrolled online in an online school for toddlers, his classmates are Filipinos. So he gets to see how it is to become a Filipino in an online setting. Imagine there are class in the Philippines um, is at 9 a.m. and in Canada it's 7 p.m. Now the story is uh, the story that I'd like to tell you is this: One day, as the online toddler class was about to start with a prayer, and the teacher was taking a look at the classmates or her students, if everybody is present, they noticed um, Dennis was not yet there. So the teacher said, we can start our class. Dennis will just um, log in later. Caden uh, said, miss, no teacher, could we wait for Dennis? And then the teacher said, perhaps the teacher was, was a little um, anxious about the time, considering that it's 7 p.m. in Canada and 9 a.m. in the Philippines. She said, oh, um, Dennis is about to log in. Um, their video is connecting already. No, we're just uh, so she, he can just um, um, come in a little later in class. But Caden said, in a very spontaneous manner, bubulul bulul pa no, bulul pa kasi si Caden. Sabi niya, teacher, my classmate Dennis is not yet here. Let's wait for him before we pray. Imagine. A four-year-old boy was able to practice empathy, concern for others, oneness, 
through an online class. When my friend um, told me the story, as evidence in the picture you'll see right there, I realized the challenge of an online class should not be an excuse to water down the knowledge, the skills, and most especially the values our students must learn. It is never an excuse. May we learn from a very short statement from Caden. Let's wait for him before we pray. My takeaway as I start this uh, brief webinar with you, the challenge in conducting an online class should not give us an excuse to water down the knowledge, skills, and values our students must learn. As Einstein said, in the middle of difficulty lies an opportunity. The pandemic really gave us a difficult time and nobody's prepared for this. But definitely, it will open up a lot of opportunities for us, teachers, students, parents, and administrators alike. Now, let's go to the more serious part. Okay. What am I going to talk about? So my presentation outline is just focused on two parts. The first part is help, um, giving out helpful enabling strategies in a blended or online modality of instruction and turning crisis into relationships, administrative operations in time of pandemic. Allow me to speak to all of you using my two hats, that of a tertiary and senior high school teacher and the hat of a school leader. I've taught in the university as a tertiary or a collegiate prof um, assistant professor for 18 years, not turning 19. But last school year, I requested my very uh, compassionate, no, very good boss, Father Bolo, I asked permission, if I can be given the opportunity to teach in senior high school. The reason is because as an administrator, I would like to be fully immersed in how it is to teach in senior high school. Lo and behold, that was last semester, the pandemic came. So I guess it's a blessing for me. That's why I wanted also not only to teach or to share with you helpful enabling strategies, but talk about turning crisis into relationships. Okay, let's go to part one. Helpful enabling strategies in a blended or online modality of instruction. In the new normal, teachers should transform how they teach online using the online tools and resources. But we have to admit that, as I've mentioned earlier, nobody came prepared. This is a novel thing for most of us. So we have to adjust. Now, in adjusting, we have to take a look at the reality. So I'll give you three point reality check. First one is that our students are digital natives. More often than not, the technology, the digital strategy and platform that we will introduce to them are no longer new to them. Um, I don't lie about my age, so I'm 40 years old. So before, when I was younger, I would often start with a very common story about Batibot, Sesame Street. Then came last year when I talked about Batibot and none of my students reacted because Batibot is no longer seen in television. And I realized neither is it very, um, very much uh, available in YouTube. Uh, but when I ask them how, do, how they do their reviews in class, they gave me all kinds of platform by which they do an exchange reviewers. If I may share, the UC Senior High School has 79 sections all in all. For example, an 18 section for, for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, those 21 sections, the class presidents or whoever is the most Bibo in class would upload reviewers in an online platform and, and 
everybody gets to share it and everybody gets to read it. In the year 27, in our graduation, first graduation of the Pioneer Batch in USD, the most applauded student was from ABM. And she wasn't even a top-notcher, but she was the most applauded. So when I, I, uh, when I was wondering why we were giving out the diploma, and then I had to whisper and ask an administrator, why is she the most applauded? The chairperson said, ma'am, kasi po, siya po yung gumasipag gumawa ng reviewer, tapos ina-upload po niya online, and everybody gets to study because of her. So they are really digital natives. Second reality check. They may be listening to you during your synchronous classes, but they're also listening to their MP3s or podcasts while eating snacks and with their eyes closed. They can do that all at the same time. But it does not really mean that they don't they, that they disrespect you. I I I I, I would disagree. Um, they respect their teachers. It's just that being born in this world of multitasking, being born in this, in this um, highly digitized world, everything is made available to them instantaneously. So, and because they're digital natives, they got to adapt what is given to them. So that's the second reality check. And the third reality check is, excuse me, on our side as teachers, because of the new strategies and because of the content we have learned in a lot of webinars, of course, thanks to Vival, we may have the tendency to be contempt, content dumpers. Maybe we have this tendency that when we, know, when we get to learn something, whether it's a technology or, um, or a content, we would like to share it because it's something, it's, it's something new. That's a reality check. And from that reality check, I would like to proceed and give an, a very important note. To avoid being content dumpers and to be grounded in the reality of our learners or our students, we are called to be master curator of resources. I'm sure you are very familiar with this, that gone are the days wherein the teachers are sage on the stage. You're already the guide on the side. But in technology, we don't use that term. I mean, it's, 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 that, that quotation or adage is not really in anymore. We are known to be curators of resources. Teachers can curate the best online learning resources about their topics and create learning playlists or menus that can make the learning process a personal journey for every student. We should avoid being a content dumper, but instead be a master curator resources that enable engaging and deeper learning. Moreover, teachers should design effective synchronous and asynchronous learning activities that enable to sustain engagement Self-regulation, that's very important, and choice in students. Those three things, engagement, self-regulation, and choice in students. Later on, as I go on with my sharing with you, my presentation, you will see that those three are very much present in the enabling strategies or techniques that I will share with you. Um, another note before I proceed is as a principal and even as a teacher, I don't have the monopoly of knowledge. And I would just like to share with you those things that I feel would interest you at the same time would help you in this new normal. Okay. So what are these helpful enabling strategies that I may share with you in a blending online modality of instruction? First, I'd like to go and take a look uh, and lead you to an online journal published by Harvard Business Publishing Education. Um, the Harvard Business Publi edu Publishing Education uses the High Intensity Interval Training, or HIT, as a paradigm to illustrate holding purposeful classes. So what is this HIP, HIT, and how do we apply HIT in conducting online or blended 
learning. Okay. Hit is exercise. Hit is exercise that involves short bursts of challenging activity followed by rest or lower intensity exercise. Studies have found that even a short HIIT workout done a few weeks, a few times a week, maximizes health outcomes, including reduce body fat, improve cardiovascular and, meta and metabolic health, and improve mental health. You might be wondering, what is Harvard talking about? Is this a gym practice or is this a, a paradigm of learning? It's a combination of both. The paradigm comes from a gym workout or an exercise, a home-based exercise. If you take a look at this slide, you will see there um, an example for a 90-minute class session in um, inspired by the HIT model or the HIT design is you start with a welcome for two minutes. 10-minute energizer, but please, when we say energizer, we are not talking about an animation. We're not talking about song and dance here in senior high school. We're not talking about that. This, are, this can actually come in classroom routines, the, routinary, the rudiments in the beginning of the class. And other things like kumustahan, so, um, so, uh, social empathy, um, things that we practice in homeroom classes. Then 30 minutes, uh, another 30 minutes for for perhaps a presentation, A, or if you like, a poll after your presentation, then you do backup groups and then rap rapid report outs. Another interval is seen there. You'll see break, re-energizer, presentation B, chat, QA, shared document collaboration, report, report outs, and next steps. Harvard.edu, uh, through the this HIT method tells us that the idea is like a gym exercise. You don't go work out immediately. What you do is you take a rest, you make sure your body is um, ready, then you do warm up, then you do moderate activity, then you do intense activity, and then you cool down. So in the same way, when we conduct our online classes using HIT, according to Harvard, edu approach the design of your class session the same way you would design a hit program in short burst intervals like the ones shown in the figure below or in the figure at the side avoid presentations that run longer than 10 or 15 minutes before you have students engage in some way in in a layman's term we call this chunking and we're very familiar with chunking uh, Chunking and teaching. The chunking activity involves breaking down a difficult text into more manageable pieces. But before the online, we do chunking in terms of um, chunking into clustering thematic themes, chunking in competency-related themes. Yeah. But here, chunking in terms of routine in an online class. Um, chunking helps us to know if the students are listening, if the students are listening, and at the same time, if they're able to retain all that we are teaching them. Okay? So, even in a light activity, such as asking questions via online platforms, chat form, or taking a quick poll, quick, a quick poll, sorry, a quick poll is enough to hold a student's attention. In my first fully online class um, during the early weeks of March, immediately after the, the stoppage of face-to-face -face classes, I, I, I did a, a wrong move with my students. I asked them to go online in a 7 to 8 a.m. class. Because diba, we had face-to-face for, -face for the start of the semester. Then we had to go to um, an online class. So if the schedule is 7 to 8 in a face-to-face, -face, we have to do our online synchronous class also in a 7 to 8 class. Now, because I was very much concerned that they will not be able to, uh, I mean, because of their internet connectivity, I was concerned with that. I did ask them to have their video on 
I just ask I just ask them to to turn it off and then they could mute their videos. Now I started teaching and I realized I wasn't sure if they're listening or not. Uh, and my topic there is about inerrancy of the Bible. So imagine, you know, I'm talking about scriptures and I'm talking in, a, in front of a screen. So I will ask them, class, are you here? Are, are you still listening? And then I realized there were three students who would alternately tell me, yes, ma'am. If I say, you understood? Another student would say, yes, ma'am. But only those three, uh, three active students. Later on, I figured out that they do routines we're in oh if it's seven to eight class huh, we're all present but you you will be the one who's going to be active in a seven to eight class and then the next batch of three or four or five will be the one to answer the students uh, the teachers um questions and then for the next class another set uh, they were witty i did not take i did not take it against them because just like us it's new to them um and I did try to give them the benefit of the doubt. So this school year, of course, you have to get wise. That's why we do hit method or just a simple chunking. Now, if you take a look at your screen, I encircled here. You have your breakout groups. Then you have presentations using chat, QA. Then you have shared document collaboration. Um, these techniques, I'm sure you're familiar, we call them scaffolding. Huh? Scaffolding and chunking, they are instructional strategies. When I was still a young student in College of Education, we're very much familiar with this one. We still have the same scaffolding techniques. What we just do is insert them um, through an on online pl platform. Uh, now, we realize that more than ever, chunking and scaffolding are important to support the relationship of new information prior and prior knowledge in managing our online classes. Yeah. So the next question could be, um, how do I do breakout groups? How will I do shared document collaboration? How or what? enabling technique you know, based on a well-written approach you no know? uh, yeah no based on a, uh, um, based on an approach can i use kasi wala naman kaming lms or i'm using a a free um, independent platform so this is the next part that i'd like to share with you Online collabor collaborative learning. Again, this is not new. OCL has been with us since the 1990s during the time that World Wide Web was introduced. Um, OCL is a model of learning in which students are encouraged and supported to work together to create knowledge. You see, this comes from a constructive, constructivist approach to learning and development. Um, OCL started, of course, by combining the constructivist approach during the time that the World Wide Web was emerging. Now, Harasim, 2012, uh, you, will, you will see that in his journal, that OCL encourages the learner to be active and engaged. Uh, but this engagement does not make a teacher as the facilitator. In OCL, or online collaborative learning, that's, that's, that's how we use it in, in the, in, during the 1990s. But now they call it breakout rooms. Yeah. So OCL through breakout rooms um, gives us the paradigm that the teachers play, the teacher place a key role not as a fellow learner but as the link to the knowledge to the knowledge community or state of the art in that discipline learning is, is defined as conceptual change and is key to building knowledge learning activity needs to be informed and guided by the norms of the discipline in a discourse process that emphasizes conceptual learning and builds knowledge 
Um, let me show you this diagram, this illustration rather, so that I can better explain to you how we apply an old framework to breakout rooms in an online setting. Okay. So this is an illustration of Harasim's pedagogy of group discussion or what we call the online collaborative um, learning, OCL. Now, students call breakout rooms. Yeah, um, um, if you take a look at here, I'm not sure if I... I anyway, at the, mid, at, at the middle of the illustration, you see the role of the, te mo the teacher, the moderator she or he becomes a link to the knowledge community, yeah, provides a good grasp of resources as a curator, and even forge relationships with industry partners. Later on, I'm going to talk about that. Forge relationships or linkages with other academic institutions, international, local. Yeah. And then because of this relationship, we see that the students now collaborates and they can already um, have this threaded discussion enabling a, enabling a response from one group to the other and information now flows within to another group this is a combination of experience their inputs they share it with their classmates they share it to their teachers the teachers Will now give their will now give his or her output uh, input rather the th three key aspect of this breakout rooms founded in OCL is or are rather idea generating the IG the idea organizing the IO and the intellectual convergence the IC. So you see, it's threading, no neatly threading knowledge now before i go to the three key phases the ig the io and the ic let me talk about what i've mentioned a while ago as knowledge community so as an a school leader or even, let's say, for example, you are, you are a coordinator, you are a team leader, or you are a chairperson, oh, whatever um, role you have, or even as a subject teacher, the key aspect of doing or curating knowledge today is to forge stronger school community and external partnerships. In senior high school, we don't just deliver content work immersion, off-campus, apprenticeship, research classes, capstone projects or capstone classes are very important in our curriculum. Now, how will we, how will we do those subjects online? We cannot go to, our, uh, to do community extension because of the restrictions, but about the, the pandemic, we may not be able to do an off-campus apprenticeship, neither could we do a work immersion in hospitals or in an engine in, in the industry. So it goes with tech walk. So how will we do that? Well, my take on the matter as a, a school leader is to forge relationships with external partners. Now, I don't want to go into a big idea and throw that to you and give you so much responsibility. Let me just start small. Okay. I graduated from USD, College of Education, and my batchmates or my friends come from different um, programs. I have a friend who's a manager, operations manager of a very, of a, of a, of a well known um, coffee shop, restaurant. Yeah. Another is in the hotel industry. So as an ordinary teacher, what I can do is ask permission from my coordinator or my subject, le subject team leader, ask permission to forge or, or rather to, yeah, to have a, to invite 
my friend have her video no? the laborato the their their commi, uh, their commissary how they do their kitchen works how they prepare their food perhaps a very short interview chunking the topics interview with the school the store owner interview with her as an operations manager interview with a a cashier using a POS and how to use POS. So that, that's simple. That's already a school committee and external partnership. But if you'd like to go big, I would like you to have a, a memorandum of agreement or a memorandum of understanding. You see, the industry partner would like that because that also goes to their portfolio that they assist teachers or students um, on their on their field uh, so i th it, it, it's very much welcome so you see whether you go downscale or upscale there's always a way uh, now let me share with you something that we will be doing in case it may help you um particularly for schools that have been long existing it's high time we tap our alumni association and give them the opportunity to share their businesses, if it's entrepreneurship, to, to share um, tips through a webinar. Or what we're going to do right now is a virtual apprenticeship, a virtual work immersion, yeah, and even capstone project. The key to the success for stronger school committee and external partnership is creativity. I go by the principle that if a four-year-old can do it, I, a fourth-year-old, can. And that goes to, to all of us. Now, so this is one frame of thought. Now we go to another. I'll go back to what I've mentioned a while ago in the diagram. If you remember, I've mentioned the three important phases on an, uh, breakout rooms using OCL. We have idea generating, idea organizing, intellectual convergence. I'm trying to lay down the basic theory so that in, apply, in applying it into the modern technology, there's, there's, there's not much difficulty. The problem is if we use, the, if we use technology without knowing the basic, Sometimes it's, that's a, a loophole, no? Yun ang, yun yung problema natin. Alam mo paano gamitin ng kahoot, alam mo paano gamitin ng menti, pero it becomes, it just becomes a, an energizer. Uh, um, nawawala yung scaffolding technique. Kaya mahalaga, tingnan natin kung saan siya naaayon at bakit natin siya ginagawa. So kapag nag-OCL ka o nag-breakout rooms ka, mamaya papakita ko kung ano kaya mga pamamaraan, no? Technological platform na pwedeng gamitan kung wala akong LMS. No, pero bago yon dapat ang unang stra ang unang makita natin in an OCL is you don't just give them or you bro break into groups or I'll give you groupings or we will do a um, C, um, CLG or um, cooperative learning group no, no, it's not just as simple we have to be we have to have a firm grasp that we are doing this because we would like them to brainstorm or we would like them to brain write as um, Dr. Alan de Guzman would call it brain writing in order to collect the divergent thinking within a group. Now, before, a good strategy for a breakout room or OCL is ask the guidance counselor or whoever does your, your um, admissions to take a look at the scores of the students. You could, that, you could do that homogeneously or heterogeneously. By that, I mean you could do a breakout rooms or a CLG combining all um, scores of these students in particular IQ, EQ, SQ, no, or whatever factor your school is uh, your your school has um, clearly identifies, no, whatever it is. Pwede yung gawin yun. That's a homogeneous grouping, or you could do it heterogeneously. Uh, but I understand the pandemic may bring a an unstable approach to grouping, so we can leave the teacher. We can have the teacher do their own groupings. Okay, so that's idea generating. That's the goal. Now, idea organizing, this is where learners compare, analyze, um, 
and categorize the different ideas previously generated again through discussion and argument. In idea organizing, argument is welcome. Uh, we organize idea, we take a look at um, uh, take, in organizing ideas, they have to categorize it. Uh, that is where we were able to apply the higher order thinking skills. Once you're able to compare, analyze, categorize, then you, we, may, we, may, we may now proceed to intellectual convergence. The aim of intellectual convergence is to reach a level of intellectual synthesis, understanding and consensus. I love this, even in my workplace, I always tell them, please, ag we agree to disagree. Nobody has a monopoly of knowledge. When a student is able to disagree with a professor or with a teacher, that's a good point. And in an OCL through breakout rooms, we encourage that. Uh, now, this um, intellectual synthesis, usually through a joint construction of some artifact or piece of work, can be done through an essay or assignment. It can be done through a presentation. It can be done through other platforms. Now, um, big question. As I was asking, I was thinking a while ago, paano pag huwag walang, ano, pag walang LMS? Well, the World Wide Web gave us, uh, gives us a lot of free online collaboration tool. So, I'm giving out two because I'm most familiar with these two. Although they are not usually used um, in the Philippines, pero kasi free siya. So, you can do FlowDoc. You just Google it. And daming magbibigay sa ng tutor for FlowDoc. You also have Slack. Um, but if you don't like this, you go to unesco.org. Uh, they have these solutions as part of the education response. You see on the screen, those are some of the many list of free digital LMS. There are also those for, um, for psychological support. Marami, no? So you could just Google that. Okay? Now, what other things? I, I'm pressed for time, so I don't want to I, I wanna keep you long. I know you have a lot of things to do. So third thing, third strategy that I'd like to share with you is the develop, development of learning modules or packets for self-paced learning. Okay? Now, um, first thing is this. I would like to be. Uh, I would like to make it clear that there is no one size fits all learning module. There's also no one size fits all um, self paced learning kit. Okay. You might also ask me what is the difference between learning module, learning packets. Uh, I've. Um, you will read a lot of journals, and even if you Google them. There's, um, there's a difference between using a modular approach to homeschooling in an online or blended, blended um, learning. But when you say learning module or learning packets, they, are, they may be used interchangeably. Actually, actually other um, Johnson, no, 1998, tagal na rin naman ito, no? but they, say, they, they made mention that other names for learning modules, learning packets are EduKit, Self-learning kit, um, online, um, I'm sorry, not online because it's 19, um, resource toolkit, all of those has the same goal, okay? So, self, um, my focus here is for self-paced learning. But of course, in developing is, um, a module or packets for self-paced learning, I have this basic assumption. The basic assumption is that you have a synchronous and an asynchro uh, asynchronous and an asynchronous class. Okay, because if you will conduct a fully synchronous class, you may or may not have a, a learning packet. Uh, it depends on how your school would like it. Although the good thing for having learning modules or learning packet or self-learning kit or edu kit, whatever you would like to call it, is that if a student has intermittent or weak connection, they could just go and be guided with their packets. Okay. But what I will, will share with you is the use of learning or uh, the use of self-paced learning packets in an asynchronous class. Okay. 
So my model, of course, comes from where I'm, is based from where I come from. We're in, we have a synchronous class, and then the next day we have a synchronous class. We all know that in senior high school, we have four units. So your school may decide, you know, or whatever your school would decide on. But in my case, I would, let's say, for example, I would like to conduct my class two hours synchronous, two hours asynchronous. Now, normally in a learning plan, we only have, we since we conduct face-to-face, -face, our learning plans before are conducted using asynchronous classes or face-to-face. -face. It's high time that we use a virtual mode of learning plans having synchronous session and asynchronous sessions. Uh, so we have to modify our learning plans. Now, is a learning plan the same as a learning plan, the same with the learning module or a textbook or a, or a syllabi? Okay, here are the answers. As a pedagogical design, the learning module is not a textbook. It is not a syllabus. It is not a learning plan or a lesson plan. And it is all of these things or it does the job of all these things, but does all these things differently. A textbook summarizes the world, transmitting content to learners in a single voice of the textbook writer. The learning module or packets curates the world, including web links to textual content, videos, and other embedded media. It is multimodal. And it, is, and it uses a variety of sources requiring students to think critically, not just to memorize um, content that has been pre-digested and delivered to them to consume. Now, what a syllabus for tertiary or a curriculum guide for us in senior high school outlines content and topics to be covered. Now, a learning module or learning packets is not a curriculum guide nor a syllabus. A, a packet prompts dialogue an update prompts class discussion, a project sets in train peer-reviewed peer work, a survey which elicits a student response. It is all of this combined into one. It is a medium to facilitate active and collaborative learning rather than individualized content acquisition. Before I met you, uh, before, before the seminar, I had a meeting with, my, with some of my, my chairs and teachers. And a common question is, one of the questions which arose was, is a learning plan the same as a learning packet? Of course, the answer there is no. A lesson plan or a learning plan is a teacher's private activity on uh, outline. You don't give your learning plan or your lesson plan to your students. But the learning module or learning packets can be shared with the class. I encourage my, our packet writers later on after, this, after we pilot test this, I encourage that they have this published, not just in the web, but have this published in a, of course, have this peer reviewed and then published in an online journal. If you notice, there are a lot of learning packets for tertiary and um, grade school, middle school, but not much for senior high school. I mean, they're available, there are templates for learning packets, but not much published in a peer-reviewed journal. So I feel that this pandemic will give us that opportunity to publish our learning packets or our learning modules. Okay. Now, I'm going, I'm going to do it fast. I'm looking at the time. I'm very sorry. I am a little, I don't want to, okay. Okay, it's 2.46. So I'm going to do it fast. Because I, I did mention that there is no exact or just one size fits all learning module or learning packet. But I would like to share with you the design practices that are common to most journals uh, and to any school for that matter. So I'm sharing to you how many are this? Um, just five, five design practice. So practice number one is Okay, excuse me. Let me just... Okay, practice number one is curriculum mapping. Okay, you're very familiar with this. DepEd gave us an, um, a most essential learning competencies. If you have revised your CG using the MELCs, it means it has been mapped out. So you just have to access and review it. Now, based on that, you have to cluster the competencies that are relatable. 
you sequence these clusters into a logical order based on your background knowledge and experiences in the discipline. In my case, I allow my teachers some flexibility because I, I appreciate creativity. Uh, now, of course, it depends upon you if you're given much flexibility or coordinate with your team leader, coordinate with your coordinator or your principal as to how they would like to cluster the competencies. Okay? Why? Is there different ways of clustering? Yes. Thematic, competency-based. No? Um, although in, in depth ed, it's easy. We could do it standard in competency-based clustering. Now, design practice too, from curriculum mapping, we go to mapping out learning packets. Now, it's as simple as alignment. You know the key concepts. You have to align it with the competency or unit cluster. No. You have to align it with your activities, your resources. And most important, most importantly, in this age that we will be using an online modality, please you um, review TPAC. No? I am not going to discuss TPAC because first and foremost, that's not my line of expertise, but you will see that there are a lot of technological um, pedagogical activities, content knowledge that you can use online and you can actually ask your, your, your computer coordinator, whoever could help you with that. No? I would encourage that you use a technical or um, technology, pedagogy, pedagogy and activities, content knowledge that you are very comfortable with. Okay, so from mapping out your learning packets, you design your packet objectives. This is not difficult because you can extract them from your CG, uh, from your revised CG. But of but you see um, the revised um, the, the difference with with just extracting extracting it. Uh, you have to cluster them together because a learning packet. I would advise that it has to be for a minimum of two weeks so that there will be continuity of learning from asynchronous, uh, sorry, from synchronous to asynchronous. Okay. Design practice number four, align your learning packet content, activities, assignments, materials, technology, and assessment to the objective. I've mentioned a while ago, a learning packet is not a textbook. We're not supposed to place all contents there. Since this is a self-paced, and what I'm sharing with you is a self-paced learning packet, it means it will not take place or it will not take the place of a synchronous class. So if, I am, if, I, if I'll give you a, um, a more detailed setting, let's say, for example, on a Monday, I'll have a synchronous class. But on an asynchronous class, my students will have, will have to learn no? in their own pace. But I have to check whether they learn or not. If they don't have a textbook, well, I will make a surf I will make a self-paced learn a learning packet. So the goal of the learning packet is to assist the learner in their self-paced asynchronous learning. And last design practice is of course assessments. You have to do your summative, formative assessment, and you design rubrics. Now, you might want to ask me, are there templates for this? Well, you could actually get a lot of templates online. But the difficulty with just adopting template without knowing the design practice is that you're doing a one-size-fits-all module or packet. Um, I would rather teachers know the design practice, know the framework, and then from the framework, you take a look at the parts, essential parts, unique to your strand, unique to your track, unique to your learning area, and draw it from there. But of course, if you're going to ask me, what are this? Well, um, uh, I, 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 I made mention of that aside from you start with the introductory sheet, huh? second, the vocabulary, third, you, you go with the cluster of learning objectives. 
the the most unique that I would like to do is having the topical outline or the task outline task. The outline task will will specify this um, what the students are supposed to do during their self-paced asynchronous classes. And then they'll just have to tick. Uh, then aside from that, they could make use of content sheet. The content sheet is a learning pro the learning um, the learning uh, lesson proper rather. Yeah. That's the pretest, the post test, then or rather assignments. Muna, no. Then other summative assessments. So those are very common. You could download it. And I don't want to give you too much information that you may not be able, I mean, in such a short span of hours. Okay. From there, you breathe a little. Okay. You could now go to the part two, the second part. This one, I would like to take on the hat of a school leader, an administrator, because I'd like to appeal to administrators at the same time. I would like to let teachers know that as a school administrator, we hear you and we listen to you. So I, I have the I, I would like to share with you how to turn crisis into relationships, administrative operations in time of pandemic. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Um, in any leadership school or school for leaders, we are familiar with a school improvement policy. And the traditional school improvement policy has two components in its framework. Now, this pandemic leads us to review our current school improvement policy by adapting a three-component framework which shall promote relationship, or I call this relational leadership. What is this three-component framework? Okay. In the diagram, you'll see that the common or traditional component that we need to reform and restructure is, or are rather, you have the instructional component and the management component. In the middle, you see that the students are there. They are the recipients of the instructional component that directly facilitates learning and the management component that is the, the area of governance and resource management, whether teachers, coordinators, or middle managers, or top management school leaders. So that's a management component, yeah. In the triangle, there's something missing. Yeah. And by the way, you're, we, are, we are using a bottom-up model. Now, gone are the days of a top-down model. We are using a bottom, uh, bottom-top model. Now, a three-component framework calls for elevating efforts to address barriers to development, learning, and teaching to the level of one of three fundamental and essential facets of school improvement. We call this third component an enabling component. If we take a look at my presentation, I started with enabling strategies inside the class. Now, I believe that enabling component is not just for online teaching or classroom strategy. Enabling component is also for school leaders. What is an enabling component? Okay. Um, enabling is defined I got this, of course. All my resources or references are placed there. Enabling is defined as providing with the means or opportunity, making possible, practical or easy, giving power, capacity, or sanction to. Now, the concept of enabling component is formulated around the proposition that a comprehensive, multifaceted, cohesive system of enabling activity is essential in establishing the third missing component in a school improvement plan. A while ago, we've made mention of the instructional component and then the management component. What's missing? You will see that in the second triangle. That's the enabling component. 
the pa the paradigm uh, sorry the pandemic gives gave us a lot of barriers and dami and daming challenge na binigay sa atin yan because there are challenges we have to address these challenges and these barriers we call it enabling component and at the middle of this triangle you see that we we can only perform that enabling component if we take a look at our students the school in general the family and the community so other um ah, let me go to this slide first before i tell you what other jargons are used in other journals now from from a two concept framework, we now go to a three concept framework. From direct facilitation of development and learning, we now go to addressing barriers to learning. Uh, so, oops, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, other, um, other journals, other reputable sources call this as learning supports component or supportive learning environment component or comprehensive student support system. Uh, whatever name you call this, it, the, it, 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 it shall address or it shall give us a great advantage in improving our school improvement plan. Now, this is also part of an ISO, which we call risk identification. Uh, if you're very familiar with ISO, we do this. Enabling component is another way... Uh, is a, um, a framework in a framework in education, but in the industry we call this the risk identification. We have to identify what are the barriers, what are the risks, so that we will know how what are the enabling components I need to address. I need to address. So just for example, right now, we never thought of having a pandemic, but if we're able, if we were able to have this foresight na baka nga magkaroon ng ganitong klaseng pandemya na hindi pwede palang pumasok ang estudyante, nakakagawa tayo ng school improvement plan natin. So come, oh, an example, come second term or yeah, no, next school year, ano ang, and they, ano ang barrier na kailangan i-address? Well, ako particularly, I would say, worst case scenario, what if we cannot go, go and have the old normal? We cannot have a face-to-face -face anymore. Then that means your school improvement plan has to focus on an enabling component that will address that barrier of learning. Okay, um, um, those. So, I'm I'm done to I'm I'm down to my last few slides. Enabling strategies and approaches are not only for classroom teachers but for administrators as well. And I'm considering when I say administrators from middle. It includes middle managers, coordinators, chairpersons, team leaders, uh, or whatever name you may you may call uh, that. Okay. Now, okay. Another diagram adapted from H.S. and Taylor. You see, this is a law. Um, this is a book on on school leadership. Long time ago, 1994. But we can adapt this uh, um, in this time of pandemic in improving our school or in, in revising our school improvement plan. Now, this diagram tells us the six content areas. All categorical programs can be integrated into these six content er arenas. Uh, so examples of initiatives, programs, and services that can be united or unified rather into a system of learning supports include positive behavioral support, Program for safe and drug-free schools, program for social and emotional development and learning, community service, family resource, school-based health center, uh, projects, etc., special education, inclusive education, all of these things. So these six arenas can actually assist us uh, in identifying our SIPs. Okay. Now... What other recommendations can I share with you for enabling component for school leaders? We are not just to take care of the mental health of our students, but we are also supposed to, mental, to take care of the mental health of our colleagues, our, our faculty members. Support system for faculty members. 
communication not only to parents and students but of course our teachers our teachers right now they are the life blood life blood of our SIB and communication is very important an emergency action plan should be included in our SIP again by focusing on the risk or the enabling components flexibility through dialogue but i'd like to stress this no sometimes flexibility is misconstrued as a 24 hour or round the clock work habit i'm sorry to to rock the boat but i would like to discourage uh, teachers school leaders to have this tendency to have our, I mean, to have this tendency na, to put on call our students, our teachers as if they are doctors. I believe that the respect of time is a respect of personhood. Flexibility would mean they can work, we, we give them options on how they do their task and deliver the boss, but they have to I mean, they have to submit to us you know, their tasks and deliverables, their time management, but at the same time, respecting their homes, you know, separating it from their offices. Other recommendations for enabling components of first school leaders, the faculty development, and a menu of options for the opening of classes. I think that at this, in this, at this point, we should already be thinking about school year 2021-2022. What are our menu of options for reopening of classes, not just for second term, but for next school year? We provide our, I mean, our SIP with plan A, plan B, plan C. So whatever happens, whatever risk may come, we would say we will survive. So I've placed the, some of the learning materials there or references. If you'd like to know more on framework recommendation for school leadership by using evidence to manage change in pandemic. I, I agree that data should be used so that we can do a framework for our school leadership or school improvement plan, whether it is data analytics, whether it is survey form, whether it is in the form of research, or best practices uh, in national and international scale. Now, I would like to end this by going back to Albert Einstein's quotation, in the middle of difficulty lies an opportunity. So let me end by talking about opportunities. Parang, pat, parang paumpisa ulit eh, no? but I'm ending. Let's talk about opportunities. But it's not enough that we talk about opportunities. We have to create opportunities. Four-year-old Caden takes up online classes in Canada every 7 p.m. He has developed the routine. My dear teachers, school leaders, my friends, colleagues, if he can so can you. Maraming salamat sa pakikinig. It's, I hope it has been a fruitful hour for you. And I may be able to take up some few questions if there are. God bless you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Doc Erika, for this very substantial session you had with all of us. Here are some questions, Doc, from our viewers this afternoon. So the first question po is from Mr. Ian Rediang. How can we do the HIIT method in non-academic subjects like TLE or TVL subjects? Okay. Ah, um, we have a hybrid subject in, in senior high school wherein we have cookery, we have cookery classes uh, inserted in ABM. So I may perhaps share with you, you know, although this may not be the best way of conducting it, but you could always improve. And I always believe that we have to share resources because we are in the same academic plane. Okay. Now, um, first, 
um, we cluster, no? We cluster components. What are these? Um, those things that can be done in a synchronous or face-to-face -face learning mode, we do that. But I suggest that in TVL, that will require a laboratory to coordinate with your school and have your virtual tour of the laboratories, have your virtual demonstration taken already, uh, chunk your presentations to three to five minutes. That's the most. Uh, let's say, for example, dicing, cutting, or types of knives, or how to handle, or what is called storage, uh, or demonstration in, in a food laboratory. Before August comes, I would like you to go to your food labs, have your demonstration taken there. Then, um, well, um, you may want to ask assistance from industry partners. I'm sure there are people who would do that for free. Uh, and then invite them for webinars or those things. So actually, po, the, the HIT method no, by Harvard or chunking, no, chunking, chunking in a simple pedagogical term is more important in a performance-based uh, lesson. No, mas, mas, mas mahalaga po yun. Pwede sa work immersion, pwede siya sa healthcare, pwede siya sa, sa apprenticeship. No? Yun nga lang po, aminado po ako na malaki po ang kailangan na effort na gagawin natin. Kasi po as school teacher or as classroom teacher, I have to go out of my way and do something like reco record no? and do it in advance. Then, the colla uh, by the way, the collaborating tool, I hope, Depende po kasi sa school policy ninyo, pero kung may MOA naman po kayo, MOU kayo sa iba't ibang industry, pwede po niyo silang isama sa collaboration tool ninyo kung saan kasama sila sa breakout rooms ninyo. So halimbawa, we have PES, we have Physical Education and Sports. In one of the breakout rooms, I can request um, former coach of UAAP to be part of one breakout rooms. One lang, no? One breakout room kasi good for five to, oh, sorry, seven to ten persons. May breakout room siya, kasama yung isang coach na graduate ng USD. No? Uh, let's say, for example, ma-invite natin, no? batchmate, uh, coach kung fu, no? Ayan, naririnig na niya ako ngayon. So, invite ko siya. Sabihin ko sa kanya, oh, batchmate, baka pwede ka naman sa isang breakout room ng collab ng isang ng PES, ng PES class namin. Sampung bata lang magtatanong sila sa'yo. Now, that breakout room will now be the resource, the, that group will now be the resource person that will classy, analyze and classify, categorize what has been discussed in the brainstorm, brainstorming, and then they will share. In another breakout room, pwede na ngayon, iba naman, siguro, let's say for example, in the field of dancing naman, iba na naman ang nanda doon. So, yun po yung halaga ng online co co cooperative learning. But the ch it's not easy. Nobody's easy anyway. But the challenge is to pull out our resources together. I hope after this pandemic, we could make a, an online platform where we can share resources. Who knows? Bibal can do it for us. I hope that answers your question. Okay, po, Doc. Thank you very much. Next question. We have here from Miss Lillian Demetrio. Hi, Doc. Ask ko lang po on your suggestion, how if the teachers are those with weak internet connection, how can we address? Oh, that is difficult. We um, always think of the welfare <laughs> of the students and their internet. Tama, tama. tama po kayo doon, no? Kasi kailangan, kung iniisip natin ng kapakanan ng estudyante, isipin natin kapakanan ng teacher. Um, iba po kasi sa konteksto na pinanggagalingan ko, um, siguro po, ikakontextualize ko po, uh, hindi po sa amin. To. Uh, this may not be true for, for USD, but this may apply to you now. In, right now, in senior high school, we are sectioning our students based on their internet connectivity. Of, this is not new to senior high. I mean, this is not an original of senior high school. That is actually a CEAP 
um, call. No? Kung makita niyo po yung resource toolkit ng CAP, nandoon doon po yun. May framework po siyang pinrovide. So, nung pinag-aralan namin yun, di naman mahirap. So, based on the survey, na-classify natin section. We section the students based on weak, in weak connectivity, weak or intermittent connectivity, and strong connectivity. Medyo po hindi namin masyadong nalagay yung no internet connectivity kasi po, sa iyo, dahil po ibang konteksto namin. Pero sa konteksto ninyo, maaaring lagyan nyo na ikatlong criteria, yung no internet connectivity. And if you classify your section like that, you may want also to classify the teacher's connectivity that way so that you can assign the teacher's kung weak ang internet connectivity niya, ilagay mo siya doon sa estudyante na may weak internet connectivity. Dahil weak ang internet connectivity niya, mas kakailanganin mo ngayon ng textbook, if not textbook, a learning packet, or, a, or pareho lang naman po ito, no? also known as a learning module. Whether you do that, uploading it in a in an online platform that, that does not require a heavy bandwidth, or... Gaya po ako, bilib po ako, if I may mention, no, one school in Kalibu Aklan, Catholic school for that matter, um, and also a mission school, a Catholic school in, in Cabanatuan, uh, um, under CASES, and the other one is Aklan Catholic College, they do rolling enrollment and even parang roll-out store. Alam niyo po, di ba, mer merong roll-in, roll-out store? Education could do a roll-in and roll-out enrollment and a roll-in and roll-out distribution of learning packets. Aminado po ako, mahirap. No? Um, pero po kasi, kung may pangailangan po yung eskwelahan ninyo, baka po yun na maka-address. Maaari po yun ay applicable lang sa community-based. Yung hindi po gaya ng Metro Manila na ang laki-laki. Maaaring community-based. Kunwari, um, one district, municipality, yung household lang po niya ay hindi lumalagpas ng 15,000 or 20,000. Yun, possible po yun. Uh, that is one of the tips that I could give you and I, I hope it helps. Okay po, Doc. Thank you. And for our last question this afternoon, the question po is from John Mark De La Rosa. Ma'am, do you have any suggestion for the administration regarding the skeletal workforce for teachers? I have, but I have a disclaimer. Uh, I may suggest, but of course, this is based on my context and based on um, some basic presumption. Okay, pa. A basic assumption. Basic assumption is this. There's a pandemic and we are in general community quarantine. Okay, yung pang basic assumption ko ha. Kasi as a school leader, we respect each other's um, point of view no, and policy. My suggestion, honestly, um, if you are a school wherein um, you have an LMS and your LMS does not require a, a big bandwidth or you may have coordinated with your LMS provider, uh, as, na kung paano niya mapapanipis yung bandwidth at mga coordinate kung imported po ito kung, oh sorry imported kung ito po ay uh, foreign no kung paano nila magagawa I agree with work from home ano po but let's say for example paano yung mga teachers na walang internet connection I suggest that teacher uh, schools will open their classrooms and their computer laboratory to the teachers so that they can go there and access there. Um, when it comes to work from home, whether operations or teachers, my basic principle is this. Identify deliverables and task. Timelines, task, and deliverables. If upon assessment, the timeline, the task, and deliverables can be done at home, do it at home. Safety is more important. Lives are more important than anything else. Yun po. Sana makatulong. Okay po, Doc. Thank you very much. So that's all the questions we can accommodate for now. And before we end the session, Doc, do you have any final reminders to our viewers? 
perhaps more than a reminder, um, some pep talk. Um, I always share this sa mga kakilala ako, alam uh, nila to, but I always tell that we can only get better. I would like us, I would like you to know that we cannot, we will not go down as long as we keep on, we keep on reviewing what we have done wrong in the past, we can only get better. And there's no, no, no amount of challenge that we can surpass. We cannot surpass if we work together. So, lang po tayo, no? I, I, I congratulate all teachers, all school leaders. We are in a very difficult situation. But if you manage to smile every day, then it means you're on the right track. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Viva. Thank you to all who are listening right now. There we have it. Thank you very much, Doc Erica Bolaños, for this very insightful le uh, learning session that you had with us this afternoon. And of course, we would like we would also like to thank all our Kavibal viewers for being with us during this session. And we hope to see you to the next series of webinars we will be having this week and next week. Molipo, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.